all right guys so so far we talked about a lot of projects we did to do's list we talked about a lot of django concepts we created models we saw admins we saw how to add apps to install apps now we'll get into user authentication using django now what is user authentication you must be thinking why is this topic even important whenever you are creating an app of say some sort of complexity you will definitely have a login system at place okay so whenever your app needs to authenticate users you might have to write users table users and then you might have to write some sort of python scripts in order to handle that login let me call it handle login so the thing is that this user authentication is so common thing that Django guys don't want you to do this. They say that we have it. You can simply use our authentication system and customize it as per your needs. So we'll use Django's user authentication system. So why use Django's user authentication system? So the reason for using Django's authentication system is that it's better. It's evolved over the period of years. It is better to use existing tools which are already evolved, which people have already tested. And it's always better not to reinvent the wheel. Okay. Until unless you want to learn something, you might want to reinvent something. But if you are working on some project and you have strict deadlines, you will definitely not want to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why we use Django's user authentication system. Another reason to use Django's user authentication system is its robustness. It is really very robust. It's a very, very robust and it is really very easy to use. You, you can plug it into any of your apps and it'll work just fine. Okay. So we will use the Django authentication system to create users who can join and use the to do's list app. So we will do that in the later videos or rather we'll create some other app if that is required. We'll see what we'll do, but this is doable. We can simply uh, add authentication system to our to do's list app. Okay. So Django's authentication system handles both authentication and authorization. Now I want to emphasize on this thing because this in academics is asked a lot. This question is really very important when it is asked from an interview point of view. Authentication and authorizations are two different terms with different meanings. We'll see what these things mean. So authentication means how to verify a user who he claims to be. And authorization means is this user authorized to do something or not? Now you must be thinking that I have already used the term in the definition, but let me explain this. Authentication means that my email ID is harry at the rate programming with harry.com. My password is H A at the rate R R star star. And if I enter this user ID and password, am I allowed to access facebook.com or not? If the details are correct, I will be authenticated. I will be logged into the system. But once I am logged into the system, authorization determines what I can do. Can I change Mark Zuckerberg's profile inside Facebook after logging into Facebook? Obviously not. I'm not allowed to do that. That comes under authorization. So what you're allowed to do is authorization and whether you are in or not is called authentication. So usually this authentication term is used to uh, refer both of these tasks, but we'll simply use authentication in our later videos. I just wanted to emphasize on this fact because this is something which is asked when uh, somebody takes interviews in big companies and all. So this is something which is emphasized upon. So I just wanted to tell you. Okay, so let's see what it provides. Now the auth system consists of users, permissions, groups, and a password hashing system and a pluggable backend system. Having said that you can always customize your Django app to write on top of this authentication system. Now what does this mean? If you have the password hashing system, if you have some system at place, which is able to uh, say store user models and all the profiles, all the emails, passwords and all those things, you can always customize the Django authentication model, the Django auth model, and you can add some more things if you want. For instance, if I'm making an e-commerce application, I can simply add the shipping address inside the user profile. 
But does it provide shipping address by default into authentication system? Obviously not. Because there might be somebody who will never use this shipping address as a part of Django's authentication system. If you are making a to-dos list, what does shipping address even mean in to-dos list? Definitely nothing. So what Django says is we'll give you a generic system, some sort of values like user, username, user email, user password, all these things will be the fields which should be used by almost all the backend systems, all the authentication backend systems. And then if you need something else, you can write on top of this. You can customize the existing Django user authentication system. Okay. Now let us see what it provides. So the authentication system consists of users. It is a person who is trying to log in and then permissions what that user is allowed to do. And then there is something called groups in the authentication system. Groups means you can simply group people and give them some sort of permission. So that is called group. And then a password hashing system. Now, if you don't know what hashing is, I'll give you a very quick and brief overview. If you store users username, say Harry, and let us say my password is H A at the rate four. Let us say this is my password. And let us say you are storing this username and password into the users table. If somehow your users table is stolen, listen to me very carefully. If somehow your users table is stolen, let me call this table as users. So this is users table or model or whatever you want to call it. This is users table in the database. If at all this users table is stolen by some hacker, he can simply access my username and password, go to the website homepage and he can log in and provide a lot of damage to me. I don't want that. Okay. So if you want to escape from this damage, what you can do is you can hash the password. Now what is hash? Hash is a one way system. Hash is a function. You can give it password. It will give you hash. Let me call it hash function. If you input password into the hash function, it will give you hash. Let me call it password hash. But if you go to the hash function and ask him the password corresponding to a hash, it will say no hash is a one way function. I can't give you the password. So what we do is we go to this hash function. We calculate hash of a password and store the hash instead of password. So we don't store password. We store the password hash hash is a one way function. So let us say my password is H a at the rate four. the password hash will look something like one B C D seven, nine, something, 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 a very, very long string. And I'll store this very long string into the database. Okay. Now, once I do that, once I store the password hash into the database, now listen to me very carefully. If at all my user's table is stolen and a hacker has access to my username and password, he will not be able to log in through this website. Why will he not be able to log in? He'll not be able to log in because he doesn't have the password. He has the password hash. If you enter password hash in place of say password, the hash will be converted to another hash, which will be hash of hash and will not match the hash and hence your user will not be hacked. I hope I explained this. So if you store username and password, it is a bit risky. If you store username and password hash, so whenever users are signing up, you can simply say that, okay, give me your password, calculate the hash and store the hash instead of password. And when somebody is trying to log in, you say, give me your username and give me your password. So you match the username from here and then you calculate the hash of the inputted password dynamically and then you match the hash with the hash which is already there in the table. Okay. So this way you can protect your users. So this is a configurable password hashing system. The best part about Django authentication system is that it automatically handles all, all these things for you. So you already have the hashing system at place. You already have the groups at place, permission binaries at place usernames table at place. Everything is there. You have a pluggable backend system. We already saw Django admin and how awesome it is. So 
these kind of awesome things make Django more awesome. Okay, now there are something called forms and view tools that we'll look into. We can restrict particular user from accessing something and we can do a lot of customization that we'll uh, definitely see in the future videos. Now let's talk about what's not included. What is included is good. We already talked about it. But what is not included is equally important. So authentication system in Django aims to be very generic. So as I told you that shipping address is not there in the user authentication system because shipping address is not generic. It's specific to e-commerce websites. But if you want to say add authentication to your to-dos list, you'll definitely want to have some sort of generic authentication system so that it is lightweight and easy to use at the same time. Uh, so Django is generic and the authentication system of Django is generic and it doesn't provide some features commonly found in web authentication systems. Now, what are those features which can be included in the Django authentication system, but they are not by default included. I'll talk about those features. Uh, one of the features is password strength checking. If you try to input password, say admin, I think it checks for length. It, it's very basic password strength checking in Django, but there's no advanced password strength checking. They don't tell you whether your password is weak, moderate or very strong. So this is something where Django doesn't shine. Somebody might come sign up with a very weak password and simply he might get hacked because of this. But again, you can encourage your users to use very strong passwords depending upon the sensitivity of the data that you are storing in the application. Also, you can add this as another layer inside your views.py file and you can simply do that by checking um, the password string using if and you can say if the password is not say eight characters long, you can simply get back to user and say, hey, please, we need a stronger password. Sorry about that. OK, you can ask him to re-enter a new password. Now throttling of login attempts. So what is this? This is simply blocking users who are trying to hack the database blocking hackers who are trying to access the website. If somebody comes to my website, okay, somebody comes to my website, he enters username Harry and let us say password one, two, three. Okay, it fails. Now he tries to enter at the same time. He tries to enter seven, seven, two. Now at the same time, he tries to enter Harry password. Now again, he tries to enter admin. What is he trying to do? He's trying to hack the system. He's trying to get into the system. Now Django has nothing at place to check for this. If somebody is trying to say log in for hundred times in the last one hour, you should be blocking that person. But Django doesn't do that by default. This is called throttling of login attempts. Throttling is a concept which is very broadly used in APIs. If you want to overuse some sort of API, it will throttle. It will say, hey, you have been using me for the last say one hour or two hours and you have been making a lot of requests lately, you are not allowed now for some time, say for 24 hours or say 10 hours. So you can throttle the login attempts. You can block the user from accessing the account for one hour, two hours, or depending upon the sensitivity, even for eight, nine hours. Okay. So if you use an Android phone, let me know if you use an Android phone. If you use an Android phone and you try to get into somebody's phone, it will throttle it. Say, hey, now try after two minutes. You have been trying a lot. You have tried a lot of patterns. The phone has not opened yet, which means that you might be a hacker and you, you might want to try all the possible patterns and get into the phone. You are not allowed for two minutes, three minutes or whatever the uh, throttling configuration is. Okay. So this is called throttling of login attempts, which Django doesn't come with, but you can definitely write some sort of custom backend to handle this thing. Now authentication against third parties. Let us say login via Google, login via Facebook, login via some other company, which might get famous in the future. So all those things are not included and it really makes sense to me to not include all those things in such a lightweight authentication system. Okay. Now object level permissions. These are some sort of specific permissions that you might want to add. So any kind of permission you want to add, you can simply include it as part of user profile or as part of some other model, which has one-to-one -one relation with user profile. Now these 
uh, things might sound haunting to you at first but we'll look into the authentication system we'll code we'll see how to create a user how to create choose a password and once we do all those things you'll definitely appreciate these concepts so i hope you understood the django authentication system i just told you the theory uh, we'll definitely talk about all these things in code and we'll code all these things we'll design an app which will use django authentication system so stay tuned for that and if you haven't already accessed this playlist i want you guys to access this playlist at this point you can click here to bookmark and click here to save this playlist and i'll get back and create an app using Django authentication system very, very soon in this playlist. So if you haven't already liked the video, please make sure to like it and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.